All right, I'm going to turn on the mic. Find the switch. Okay, is the mic, is that mic working? All right, perfect. Um, so like Kelly mentioned, I had two weeks of laryngitis and it's been gone for a couple weeks, but uh, my voice is not completely better. So it will be a huge, think of it as a public service to me if you ask questions during the presentation, because then it'll give me just a minute to not talk. And also I think will be really helpful to break up the session. So I'm really happy to take questions during the presentation. You may notice there is uh, someone who's videotaping this presentation for use uh, for people to be able to do CLEs online. But what you should know is that when you ask questions, I'll repeat them for the videotape. And so you're, you will be uh, anonymous questioner. So, so please feel free to ask any questions you have and don't worry that you're going to be identified in some way on the videotape. So I'll take care of repeating that. So like Kelly mentioned, I was here two years ago in the summer and did uh, similar trainings, one in Lexington and one in Norfolk. And so what I've done is uh, updated the trainings from a couple years ago and added some new information, updated some things. Uh, and so hope that we can go through today and that you'll come out of here with a, a pretty good understanding of what kind of immigration issues may come up for children and families in juvenile court. But I don't want you to be afraid when you start looking at the PowerPoint and looking at the materials because a lot of this information is pretty complicated and the number of issues for families in juvenile court who are immigrants is huge. And so the idea today is not for you to feel like you need to come out being an immigration expert, that there's any expectation you would handle an immigration case with the Immigration Service, but it's more for you to get basic information, maybe be able to spot issues on some of the cases that you handle. And, um, and really be able to, to do that as a result of the training. So don't feel overwhelmed. Um, the materials in your yellow folders, you may want to pull out everything that's in there. There is a schedule in there that we're going to try to stick to pretty closely. We'll, get, we'll definitely get you out of here on time and perhaps a little bit early, depending on, on how we move along. There are also a couple sheets that are color paper that have hypotheticals on them. Those are going to be for the afternoon. The morning session, and which is why asking questions will be great, the morning sessions will be primarily uh, me going over a lot of uh, basic information on immigration issues. The afternoon will have some breakout sessions. So those hypos on the color paper are going to be used for the afternoon breakout sessions. And then also in the materials are um, a printout of the PowerPoint, and you'll see it's really detailed. It's probably about 150 slides on there. So part of the idea is that you certainly can take notes if you need to, but a lot of the information is all presented there for you. And part of the point of that is so that you can really use it as a resource, that you get some basic information today, but that if you are working with immigrant children or families on your cases, you'll be able to pull out this information and, and use it. The other thing that's in your packet are a set of materials, and those you probably want to have out, because I'll refer to them as we go along. Those have copies of sample, you know, if people are wondering, what does a work permit look like? What is a green card? I have samples of all those in there. And then I have some sample court documents you might use, sample immigration forms. And so if you just have those accessible, when I refer to them, you'll be able to, to pull them out. Uh, and so like Kelly mentioned, we, I've been doing these trainings on immigration issues all around the country. And so in addition to coming to Nebraska, I've done these trainings in Indiana, in Nevada, in Kentucky. And uh, one of the things I always do is include my contact information. So I have it here on the front slide. And you should feel free whenever you want to get in touch with me to call or email if you have issues that come up on your cases that you want to talk about. I've tried, and what you'll see in the presentation is I've tried to do a fair amount of research to make the presentation very Nebraska specific. So I apologize in advance if I'm not totally up to date on some of the lingo, but I've tried to make things as specific and, and relevant for you in Nebraska as possible. So if you have issues that come up on your cases, you can always feel free to touch base with me. I may not be have expertise on the Nebraska state law side, but certainly could give you a lot of pointers on the federal immigration side and also try to connect you with people in Nebraska who may be able to answer more specific questions about how does the immigration office in Nebraska handle these cases. And what you'll see at the end of the PowerPoint, and we'll talk about it at the end of the day today, we'll spend maybe 15 minutes going over it. I compiled a whole list of resources that are Nebraska specific. 
I called every legal services agency in Nebraska that does immigration and found out what they do and who to talk to. And so I've provided all that information on the PowerPoint. And then that way, if you actually come across cases where you think an immigration attorney or, or immigration legal assistance would be helpful, then you can, uh, you'll have somebody to, to call. So I'm just going to give you a brief overview of what we're going to cover today. And, um, and then I think because we're a small group, we'll shut off the video and I'll just have you go around and you can tell me who you are and what you do and why you're here. Uh, but just for you to know, what we're going to start off first with is I just compiled some information about where does Nebraska fit in in the immigration picture, sort of looking nationally at some statistics on immigration, but then also talking specifically about what does the immigrant population look like in Nebraska, how has it grown, what kind of percentages of immigrants do you have uh, in the state. And then we're going to spend some time going over a basic explanation of immigration terms. And for some of you who maybe have some background in immigration or you've had to deal with some cases of immigrant families, you may know a fair amount about the structure of the immigration service or immigration terms. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to presume zero immigration knowledge. For, everyone always looks so happy when I say that. We're presuming zero immigration knowledge. Uh, and so we're going to go over some really basic terms I'm going to talk to you about the Department of Homeland Security, how is it set up, and then go through all different kinds of immigration status. What makes someone a US citizen? What does it mean to be a permanent resident? What does it mean to have temporary legal status, to be undocumented, to be an asylee? So we're gonna go over all those things as a basic uh, beginning of the day. And then we're gonna spend time talking about different kinds of immigration relief for children and families. And so we'll, we'll think about, you know, if you have a child or a parent that you're working with who may be undocumented, who has no lawful status here, is there something that they may be able to do or some immigration option for them that could make them a permanent resident or ultimately a US citizen? So we'll walk through in some detail, we'll talk about special immigrant juvenile status because that's a form of relief only for children who are under the jurisdiction of a juvenile court. So for all of you who are here, that may be a very important kind of immigration uh, relief. Then we'll talk more generally about some other family-based, U visas, other kinds of relief that can apply to children but also to, to parents and that don't have a juvenile, a juvenile court specific component. Then in the afternoon, we'll go over uh, the impact of juvenile delinquency dispositions. And so we'll talk about what does it mean when you have a non-US citizen child in a delinquency system and how do the dispositions there potentially affect their immigration options or their, immigration, their current immigration status. Then we'll talk a bit about immigration holds and removal procedures. And I think this may be helpful, particularly for folks who are working with families where perhaps you have a parent who's detained by the immigration service and the child ends up in the juvenile court system as a result. And so I'll try to go through and give you really basic information on what actually happens when the federal government detains someone, whether it's an adult or a child, and then what, is, what happens in those removal proceedings. So you have a sense of time frames and sort of what is going on for that parent perhaps while your, your juvenile case is going on. And then we're also going to talk more generally about working, some tips on working with detained parents. If you have a parent who is in immigration custody and you have a juvenile court case that's going forward, what are some ways that you can better communicate with and involve that parent and what are the, some of the consequences of the detention for your cases? And then we'll spend some time just talking more generally about working with immigrant families. I mean, that's a, you could have a seminar for five days about that, but we're going to you know, talk in some, some uh, general ways about that. that. And then at the very end, we'll go over the resources that I put together and just give you ideas about studies that are interesting to look at, but also uh, specific practitioners in Nebraska who may be able to help you with your immigration cases. So that's the overview. And so now we'll have the video off. And maybe people can just go, if you, many of you probably already know each other, but I know, you know no one here. So if you can tell me who you are, um, sort of where you fit into the juvenile court world. And then I know a lot of people may be here, they just are interested in getting this information in a general way. If you're motivated by something specific, whether it's a case that you have now or in the past, or anything you know, that you want us to know, or that you want me to know so we, I can address it, that would be great as well. So we can start wherever you like. 